What's up guys? Welcome to the channel. Caleb again. And I've got some exciting news for you today and it, I'm pretty stoked. There's my Bronco. Y'all been waiting for a walk around. That's not happening in this video, but I do have something I'm very excited to show you. As you know, I lead the Gold Country Bronco group. Well, actually, I co-lead it with a guy named David Stryker, who is the original creator of the group. And since we've gone from 40 members to basically 550 members in the span of eight months, I've started to become invited to all these promotions and events. And I've been hitting up other companies, trying to get some discounts and, and work with really cool companies that I enjoy either their product or, or what their goals are. For example, Wild Horse Broncos is a great uh, partner of ours. Joy working with Mitch, great dude. I'm actually going to Keen of the Hammers with him next week. And in preparation for that event and showcasing our group, my Bronco, to all the companies that are gonna be out there, I wanted to advertise the group, so to speak, to kind of take that next step. And to do that, uh, I hit up Sunco Protective Films and we have some pinstriping on the Bronco now. I'll be showing you that, but that's also not what this video is about, even though you get to see a little sneak peek on that. We are gonna be installing the KBD Bronco Fender Flares. And I went with these Fender Flares because of a multitude of reasons. One, my stock ones started to separate because I've been hitting them on the trail and they've been you know, used and abused. And it cost about $250 for a replacement. And for $350, I can buy four new brand new ones from KBD that not only give the Bronco a fantastic look, but they also give me a little bit more clearance and a little bit more durability on the trail. And they don't break the bank. So I got them. They just came in. They shipped within like two days and they got here within two days of them shipping. So four days total. Not bad at all. They came from SoCal. I live in NorCal. So today we're going to be doing a quick install, just a quick video. So stay tuned and enjoy. First thing you want to do, you have to remove in the fender flare. You want to clean up this area with some water. You don't really want to use a chemical. You want to keep it streak free. So just clean it up really good. And then take the supplied oil, sorry, the supplied alcohol prep pads and wipe it down real good to remove any oil or residue. So this is the problem I was having with my stock fender flares. I love them. I wasn't even planning on replacing them. But as you can see, a couple trips on the trail, they've started to separate. Sorry if uh, my kid is in the background, he's, uh, he's eating some food, dad duty today. But you have these nylon uh, locks that come from KBD and there's five circular holes here in the lining and you just push them right in, super easy. Push all five in. like super easy and yes these uh, are not permanently mounted you can remove them I don't think it's as fast as the stock fender flares but it's still fairly fast okay that's one done next up in this process we take uh, your sheet metal screws place the washer on them. You're going to need five of these, one for passenger side, one for the driver's side, five each side, sorry. Then you're going to take your, your fender flare for the correct side and you're going to line it up here. And then after you line it up, you're going to apply the screws into your nut search that you put in and just loosely attach them and just leave them loosely attached. Don't snug them quite yet. I'm actually struggling a little bit with the uh, the screws just because it kind of behind this and this angle doesn't work. But I have a, a fancy other screwdriver. I'll grab that real quick. All right, I got one of these 
uh, fancy blue point contraptions that I bought a long time ago when I used to work on airplanes. Uh, it's coming in use now. You could probably get away with a, a longer screwdriver or some really small one, but this just makes it that much easier. So I'll just get all five in. Nice and loose. And then uh, that'll be it. I'll give you a quick shot here of what I'm doing. So you got these five screws that you put in. Remember to put the washers on. Just loosely. And kind of get it where you want. And then we're going to get in here and start removing this uh, spread double-sided tape. One thing I'll recommend, because uh, now at this point, now that you have the the nuts loosely in, or the bolts, screws, whatever you want to call them, you have to reach in and grab this corner tape and peel it back. And as you peel it back, you got to press it in. Now, that sucker didn't want to peel back. I had to use razor blade, a pair of pliers, and a flathead screwdriver to get it out. So what I'd recommend is before you put the flare on, peel back the corner just so you have it ready to go. And then it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, this is what it looks like after install. Most of it turned out pretty well for this, uh, my first attempt. There are some things I don't like right off the bat. This corner wouldn't stick quite right. It looks great when it's like that, but as soon as you let go, it comes off. And you can see the tape is separating just a tad in there. Um, but you can't really tell from a distance. And like I said, these are going to get beat up pretty quickly. But I do like a good fit and finish, at least for the first month until I start to trash on them. But, uh, looks good. I'll show the other side. This is stock. Obviously, quite a bit less. Poke. But hey, I like it. I'll take the look over and the durability over some extra dirt that might get tossed up there. All right, now that we've got the fronts on, we're going to move to the back. And these are going to be a little bit more tricky. One thing I'm noticing is that the, uh, the tape isn't adhering quite as well as I wanted to. It is sticking, but in some spots it's sagging out a bit, even with a lot of pressure holding for like a solid minute. So I know the section that goes right here is going to require simply adhesive and nothing else. So we'll see how that goes. But for now, we're going to be removing these clips, taking this off. I'll show you how one of the rears is done. I'm not going to show you both because that would be redundant. And I like being efficient. What I tell all my trainees. There's a little dust show for you. Because I actually off road this thing. And you should too. So next we'll uh we'll clean this muck up and uh yeah, we'll get the pieces on. Stay tuned. Hug in. Now, you've noticed my beautiful decal we talked about earlier. Got that installed by Sunco, but I also got this uh, PPF film installed by Sunco as well. The entire body, except for the tailgate, has it. It's just clear finish, and you can't tell it's there unless you look really closely. They did a good job about tucking it. But one thing is, I've scratched the heck out of my Bronco. This scratch is all up and down here. They don't show in this light very well, but they're running the whole length of the Bronco as well. And most of them self-heal after being in the sunlight for a certain period of time. Some of the deeper ones don't heal. And I've been scratching this thing almost every week for a year. And now I'm noticing that the scratches are taking longer to go away, if they go away at all. But it's just a peace of mind knowing that my Bronco isn't scratching the paint. 
the paint's fine. All the scratches you see on it when you look at it are on the clear coat. So once I, theoretically in five years, if I take that uh, PPF off, the paint underneath will be pristine. So a little trick there to keep your paint nice, but still have fun wheeling and not worry about pinstripes. And, you know, I don't care too much about pinstripes, but still, I don't need to wreck my paint, so I'm not going to. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take two of these quick disconnect clips that you steal from your old fender flares. And then there's two grooves on these back ones, one here, one here. And you're going to stick these in and you're going to use these for your new uh, quick disconnect clips. And you're going to reuse those to, to hold it in place. You're also going to do one of those same Nine, uh, nylon nut certs, whatever you want to call them. It's going to go right here. And for the rest of the attachments, it's going to use these bolts that they provide. And so I'll go through real quick and I'll set this all up in place and I'll show you the progress. All right, my apologies, I misspoke. The nylon insert is going to go right here. So it's going to be the square, big hole, small hole. Small holes where it goes. So now the next step, you're going to take a 10 millimeter socket and there's three hex head bolts right here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take all three of those out. And then the hardware that comes with the product is going to bolt right back into those locations. Wipe this all down with the adhesive. Oh, sorry, with the alcohol that they give you. They give you plenty of alcohol prep pads. Wipe it down. I don't know if I talked about this, but this paint is garbage. But all that will be hidden. So yeah, wipe it down in preparation. The adhesive is not that great. And I was showing in the other video where I talked for three minutes of the audio is the separation that's happening. This is after allowing it all to flatten out. I applied some heat, allowed the stuff to unfold after it was in the box as they sent the instructions. But I applied pressure to this for a minute straight and I held it and I held it and I held it. It looks great. You let go and it just peels back. Dirt and dust is going to get in there. I'm not sure how it's going to hold up. We'll see. It looks great, but that bugs me. And then front end, I got this pretty good. All that held in like it's supposed to, except for this very end right here. It's sticking out. And that is not bueno. Come on. Why can't that suck in? Why can't there be something to hold that in? This side's even worse. Again, up here it's okay. There's some gaps. You can see the separation of the tape in there. But here it's like a gap and the tape is just all separating. Try and push it in. Looks great. You're like, oh cool. Like, oh, nope. It's not sticking. It refuses to stick. I've tried everything. Back over here. This is faring a little better than the other side. That's okay. Not great, but it's okay. From a distance, it looks fine though. It actually looks really good. I love the look. I love the idea they had. I love the price point. Something's not right with their tape though. So if you have better double-sided tape, it might be worth adding strips in addition to the strips they have installed on here. We'll see, I might end up taking this to a shop that specializes in 3M stuff and see if they can get that to stick better. Because that's gonna, that's gonna bug me, especially if dirt and stuff gets in there and I'm washing it out and it just starts peeling away over time as the adhesive loses its adhesiveness. I'm not sure if that's gonna happen or not. I'm happy to be the guinea pig and find out. So yeah, that's pretty much what I just recorded. So now we're going to move on to the next step, which is going to be fixing up that piece here and then that smaller piece connected by adhesive only. Hoping that's fine. 
right here. Okay, so now we're going to use our three X nuts, 10 millimeter, and our one screw. And you should have these reused from your old one, the quick disconnects from your old fender flares. Give it a quick old wipe down because why not? Then we like, like we talked about with the front, we want to come through and pre peel the beginning of this tape because it is a pain it when it's already on the vehicle. So do that there. There. Just make sure you go through and do on any part of the tape that's not together. So there's two pieces of tape. There's this one big strip and there's a small strip. Make sure you pre-peel both. Otherwise it won't be a good day. So we'll seat these in. Okay, so we got this last piece that we need to put on. And I will say, I hope I'm not speaking too soon. This part went on very well. It actually, all the seams lined up, the tape pushed in. There's a little bit of corner peeling at the back, but it's so minimal that I'm, I'm okay with it, as long as it stays that way. I'm just wondering why this couldn't happen up front. I don't know. We'll see. But um, yeah, so now I'm going to do this. This part is only kept on by tape. And it has to line up. So you want to kind of get an idea for where you want to place it before you take the tape off. And then go from there. So I look, I look at it like this. Make sure the gaps are somewhat even. You don't want to get too close to where it hits every time the door closes, and you don't want to get too far away to where there's a big old gap. So here's the final product on the back. It looks pretty darn good. Gives it that extra space. A lot more room for clearance. I'll do some measurements for you real quick and uh, let you know. So I made the mistake of not measuring the front beforehand, but it's sitting at six and three quarters exactly right now at the top. Now with the old Sasquatch in the rear, it's sitting at six and seven eighths. And right here, just above eight inches. So you get quite a bit of extra clearance for clearing where your tire might rub on your fender liner or your fender flare. And then you'll see I also have the DV8 fender liners, which gain you almost an inch of clearance up and then clearance in all directions in the route. And I have a post about that up on Code 6G. But yeah, overall, Pretty darn excited. Alrighty, guys. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Like always, uh, hit that like button or subscribe if you enjoy what you're seeing. I'm going to be dropping some more videos soon regarding the Bronco and an upcoming trip to KOH that I'm doing with Mitch Creel. Really excited about that. We're going to have some awesome content for you. I'm also going to be doing a walk around video of the Bronco. Everything I've done to it, not just these things and some stuff you see here, but everything underneath, inside, outside all in a big nice package project x i'm an affiliate with them if you go to their website projectxoffroad.com and you use your discount code specific to me all caps gc bronco 6g 
you'll get 10% off. It also helps me out. I don't make any money from this kind of stuff. All this stuff you see here, I purchased with my own money. I haven't used a discount on anything except for the fender liners. Those are half off because honestly, I wouldn't spend full price on those anyway. The other thing I'd like to mention is the Bronco is going to be getting suspension hopefully soon and 37s. After that, the build will almost be done. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and see you next time. I also forgot to mention Gold Country Broncos. I keep talking about them. It is a Facebook group and a website that we have. We're located in Northern California. We currently have around 540 members. Most of them already have their Bronco. We do regular events in the Northern California area. We off-road. We do cars and coffee. We go to local breweries and hang out. We're not afraid of any trails. We do anything from easy peasy stuff, trail riding, scenic stuff, all the way up to the Rubicon. Yes, we are next to the Rubicon, so we hit that in our Broncos. If that's something you're interested in, if you're local to us or you want to check us out and maybe journey up for one of our events, we have a lot of stuff coming this year as we grow. We started about eight months ago with 40 members, and we are currently, like I said, 540 members. We have a lot of partnerships with local companies and businesses, as well as DBA Off-Road, Project X Off-Road, a lot of off-road in these names, Bronc Buster, to name a few. There's more and there's a few more coming. Uh, something to note is this year we're going to be doing a couple trails. One of them is going to be called the Bronco Playa Bash. We're going to be going to Black Rock Playa October 13th through 15th. I'm trying to make this a big event. I'm trying to get the details out there, get people involved. I want to have at least 40 Broncos. It's easy. Bronco sport friendly. So if you're one of the sport brethren, we welcome you. Anything with a Bronco in the name, anything with the Bronco in the name is welcome. So please don't be afraid to come out. And if you see something you don't want to do, you don't have to do it. You can just hang out, hit some other trails, have a blast. That's all on our website. So if you Google Gold Country Broncos, we're the first result. If you Facebook search Gold Country Broncos, we're the first result. Pretty easy to find us. You don't need a link. Just type it in. And I mean, I think that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoy the appearance mods I've done to my Bronco. I did most of the underneath the underpinnings before I went through the exterior and lights because I believe that you should do armor first, then the accessories. And that's what I did here. Like I said, stuff is coming, suspension, tires, all that. But that's for another video. Take care, for real.